We're delighted to work with the Lloyd's Register Foundation through the Centre for Engineering Education to host so many fantastic international uh, academics, industry representatives and other partners to talk about the future of engineering education. We're invested in this sort of idea because we're interested not just in where the problems are in the UK but where they are in the world and so we're looking to identify the shared challenges in engineering education around the world. This is a very exciting conversation. The energy in the room is very high and I think that there are so many diverse opinions that we can actually craft solutions that will be global in scale. The thing that's come across perhaps the strongest for me, and not a surprise, is that everyone is thinking one thing the same, which is strong engagement in the whole process is crucial for the success in education. So it's not a matter anymore of saying, how do I teach? It's a matter of saying, how do people learn? And how can we engage them in the whole of that process? How can we engage them perhaps with the business dimension, the, the aspects of engineering that we used to exclude? Well, in the UK, I think the main challenge is to attract more young people to study engineering, and particularly a more diverse cohort of young people to join the profession. So we seem to get all the same kind of people who think in the same kind of way. And if we could just get a bigger diversity of people, we'd have a bigger range of ways of thinking and we'd be more creative and we'd be more able to uh, address the problems of society. There's a topic of conversation about learning from different vocations, so medicine, law, um, even accounting, and I think this idea of thinking about training for a vocation and what other schools are doing is a, a, a good parallel, even though the, the nuances might be a little bit different. If you look at the... Uh the kids today, uh, they're very much aware of what's happening in the world, what are the real challenges in the world. So what we need to do is try to demonstrate to them that that's exactly what we do in engineering and they can tackle these problems. Uh, well, we've, we've got to get to them as early as we can and we have to also account for the fact that there are a lot of systemic and cultural issues that prevent students from having the kind of educational preparation that they're looking for, that they would like, um, and also thinking about how we can um, create uh, really inclusive environments in our engineering programs in college. The important thing I think you can show young people that they can make a real difference in some of the great challenges that are facing all of us, things like climate change, clean water supply for everyone on the planet, uh, affordable food, pharmaceuticals and so on. And that really is what turns young people on. It's probably the best way that we're going to attract uh, new students is to say that it's a new world, um, how would you like to influence the world that you live in and uh, you can use your creative skills as well as working with others and your past experiences to come up with the best solutions to, to, to engineer a better world. From an industry perspective we'll be looking at where the strengths in research lie and we expect that research then to be translated into engineering education. So engaging industry in that puzzle of what is it that it will take not only to attract a student to your company, but to attract them to the profession and to make them capable as contributors is, is the core of what, why we should be engaging with industry and what industry can help education do. It takes two years on average for engineering graduates to really bring value to the company. So if we can reduce that period, then we are helping these new graduates to be more successful in their career, and we're also helping industrial partners to, uh, to make better use of these graduates. And that is how I think we should be uh, changing our current engineering courses. We need to educate our students for what will be needed 10, 20 years out. So we have to be careful of the balance between training and education and make sure that we are preparing students always to learn and to be prepared for the future challenge in addition to the current challenge. I think we need to rethink what we have been doing. First, we need more flexible curriculums. So engineering is something that is changing every year super dynamically and we are very slow. I think what we need to do is look at the pedagogy, the approaches to learning that we use because I think we are uh, well in need of a new uh, set of pedagogies to improve the kind of uh, engineering skills, problem solving, critical thinking skills in students. But uh, what is happening faster is uh, the minds of young people, the environment that young people grow up in. And we have to adapt to that 
And uh, strangely enough, I find that when we adopt to such changes, we always improve engineering education and also make it more interesting and more entertaining, you could say, for both educators and students. Do we need to further rethink what we do? Well, I suppose there's an ongoing challenge, and I think the a lot of really useful deliberations in this workshop around the shifting nature of engineering work and the key issue is going to be a deliberation around what content theory needs to be there and to what degree we can change some of that um, and also the balance between doing if you want to say theory and practice work. Any opportunity to come together with other professionals and people engaged in the area of engineering education is an opportunity to learn, it's an opportunity to really try and challenge the status quo and hopefully with our collective discussions and the ideas that we come up with we'll be able to bring about some fundamental change in something that is so important to our world as it moves forward. What's next? Because you know, this can't just be a flash in the pan. And one of the things I said at the conclusion of the workshops is that we need to think about what we move on to next in order to build on this enthusiasm. So I'm looking forward to the next meeting and to see how the agenda has been taken forward.